Welcome to Amar Astrobytes, where we bring you stories about astronomy in bite-sized chunks. My name is Michael Burton, the director of Amar's Observatory and Planetarium. Today's Astrobyte continues our tour of the solar system. We take a look at the outer planets. We will be visiting the two gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, and the two ice giants, Neptune and Uranus. We will also be looking at some of their amazing moons. We start with Jupiter, king of the planets, ten times bigger than the Earth, yet it spins on its axis in just ten hours. Jupiter is a gas giant. Here we see the top layers of its atmosphere. Several bands of circulating clouds are seen. The light coloured ones called zones, those dark ones are belts. The colours come from slight differences in the chemical composition of ices such as ammonia. Wind speeds can be up to several hundred kilometres an hour, but the circulation is in opposite directions between the zones and the belts. The great red spot, the circular storm system below centre, is about twice the size of the Earth and has been blowing for at least 200 years. It rises 8 kilometres above the surrounding cloud tops. Jupiter consists mostly of hydrogen, with an atmosphere about 5,000 kilometres thick. In this cutaway view, which represents our best model for its internal structure, we see that most of the planet comprises a deep layer of metallic hydrogen. At the incredibly high pressures in this Jupiter's mantle, the hydrogen is in liquid form, not solid, and conducts electricity. In the centre, there is a rock and ice core about the size of the Earth. Jupiter has four large satellites, or moons, first seen by Galileo in 1610, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. Their sizes are similar to our own moon, but they are very different to it and to each other. They are worlds in their own right. They fly around Jupiter in just a few days. We will now take a tour of these Galilean satellites, the largest of Jupiter's 79 moons. This is Io, the innermost of the four. The yellow colour is from snow fields of sulphur dioxide. For Io is an active volcano, all of it. Immense tidal forces due to the proximity of massive Jupiter cause the moon to flex as it orbits Jupiter in just under two Earth days. This keeps Io's interior molten. Volcanoes are constantly erupting. Two are seen in this image. Io's weak gravity and thin atmosphere mean that the plumes rise to great heights, around 100 kilometers above the surface. Over 400 active volcanoes have been catalogued, making Io the most geologically active object in the solar system. Next we come to Europa. The smooth, bright surface is due to water ice. It is entirely covered by ice rafts, akin to the Arctic Ocean, only much thicker. You can see from the cracks that the ice rafts sometimes break and rejoin. They float on an ocean that encircles the moon, estimated to be about 100 kilometers thick. Despite being smaller than our moon, Europa has more liquid water than the Earth. The heat from tidal flexing keeps the water liquid. Is there life in Europa's oceans? No evidence has been found so far but there are plans to send probes there to investigate this intriguing question further. This slide shows the two outermost Galilean satellites, Ganymede and Callisto. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system, even larger than the planet Mercury. It is an icy world, possibly also containing layers of liquid water beneath its surface. Two types of terrain are seen here, heavily cratered dark regions and younger areas of grooves and ridges. Callisto, to the right, is only slightly smaller than Mercury and has an ancient surface being highly cratered. The major feature seen here is the Valhalla impact crater, 3,000 kilometers across with frozen circular ripples where rocks that were melted by the impact have re-solidified. Now we head to Saturn, just a little smaller than Jupiter, the most spectacular site in the solar system when viewed through a telescope because of its remarkable rings. Saturn has a similar structure to Jupiter, a gas giant dominated by hydrogen with a dense rocky core. Cloud bands circulate around the planet like Jupiter 2. This image was taken by the Cassini spacecraft en route to Saturn. Four of the moons can be seen as faint dots if you look closely. This schematic illustrates the extent of Saturn's moons and the structure of the rings. At top, and mostly shown to scale, are the largest of the 82 known moons, dominated by Titan. This is the largest number of moons of any planet, however new ones are regularly still being found. The bottom is shown the extent of the rings 
and some of the major icy moons from Mimas to Rhea. The rings extend to nearly 300,000 kilometers from the planet, about three quarters of the distance to our own moon. In this close-up of the rings, we also see two shepherd moons, Prometheus and Janus, as well as Pandora. The rings are thought to be pieces of comets, asteroids and shattered moons torn apart by Saturn's gravity. They are made up of billions of small chunks of ice and rock, coated with dust. Despite being 300,000 kilometers across, their thickness is typically just 10 meters, vastly thinner than a piece of paper enlarged to this size. The two shepherd moons clear a trap in the rings, seen here as the gap before the outermost ring. Look carefully to see the two shepherds either side of this ring. Titan is Saturn's largest moon, discovered by Christian Huygens in 1655 using a two-inch diameter telescope. Saturn is the second largest moon in the solar system, over 5,000 kilometers in diameter, and the only moon to have a thick atmosphere. It mostly contains hydrogen, together with methane and a variety of hydrocarbons. This makes its atmosphere opaque, we can't see through. We had to send a spacecraft there to discover what lay beneath. The Issa Cassini mission to Saturn carried the Huygens probe, which successfully landed on the surface of Titan on the 13th of January 2005. Falling gently through the cloud layers, the descent was braked by a parachute. It revealed the new world shown here. Oceans and river systems of liquid methane at minus 180 degrees centigrade. Land of frozen water ice, hard as rock at this temperature. The probe landed on what appears to be mudflats, methane, strewn with boulders. It is only the second body known to have liquids on its surface after the Earth, only this is liquid methane, not water. Titan has its own weather systems, but driven by the phase changes between the solid, liquid and vapour forms of methane, rather than of water as it is on Earth. Another remarkable moon of Saturn is Enceladus. Just one-tenth the size of Titan, it is covered by fresh, clean ice. The surface is highly varied, ranging from old, heavily cratered regions to young, geologically active terrain. During a flyby, the Cassini spacecraft discovered geysers of water vapour venting from cryovolcanoes. Over a hundred have now been identified. Some of the water vapour escapes and supplies material for Saturn's outer E-ring. The rest falls back to Enceladus as snow. There is evidence for a large subsurface ocean of liquid water under the South Pole, about 10 kilometers thick. Most intriguingly, organic molecules have been identified in the plumes, leading to speculation that life might exist in the ocean. Our journey now takes us to the outer two planets of the solar system, Uranus and Neptune. We know far less about these planets than Jupiter and Saturn, not just because they are further away, but because they have only briefly been visited once by the Voyager 2 spacecraft, which flew by in 1986 and 1989 respectively. Uranus and Neptune are known as the ice giants, as their mantles are predominantly composed of water, ammonia and methane ice, not the hydrogen and helium of the gas giants. While just visible to the naked eye, Uranus escaped classification as a planet until William Herschel observed it through a telescope in 1781, the discovery that inspired Archbishop Robertson to found the Amar Observatory just a few years later. Neptune is not visible to the naked eye. It was discovered in 1846 by Leveria and Halle following mathematical calculations when it was realized that Uranus wasn't following the orbit predicted for it by Newton's law of gravity. Uranus orbits the Sun unusually, being tipped over so the equator is almost at right angles to the plane of the orbit. It also rotates in the opposite direction to all the other planets except Venus. It is spinning on its side. This orientation provides a clue to its origins, likely an encounter with another planetary-sized object eons ago. Uranus has a ring system too. Not as spectacular as Saturn's, but there are 13 distinct rings. 18 of Uranus's 27 moons are also in orbit in the tilted equatorial plane, possibly formed in the same collision which knocked the planet over. Our final stop on the journey through the outer planets is the Triton, the largest moon of Neptune. A most unusual moon, it might even be a captured Kuiperbelt object akin to Pluto. Ridges, plateaus and ice plains are present, with few craters, implying the surface is relatively young. Geysers of nitrogen were seen by Voyager, completely unexpected in the frozen depths at the edge of the solar system 
with the temperature is minus 235 degrees centigrade. How the cryovolcanoes are powered remains a mystery. There must be a subsurface ocean. Tidal interaction with Neptune is causing Triton's orbit to decay. One day, a few billion years from now, it will break up as it gets too close to Neptune. The end result may be the formation of a spectacular new ring system around Neptune. We finished today's astrobike with a family portrait of the solar system. The view looking back to the journey we have made, as seen from Voyager 1 on the 14th of February 1990. The tiny dots are the images of the planets as they were seen by Voyager's camera when 6 billion kilometers away from the Sun, in a mosaic made up of 60 frames. The pale blue dot that is the Earth can barely be seen within a scattered light ray from the Sun. That is our home. Thank you.